Hi everybody. This is a continuation on the chainmail how-to video that you might have seen before where we made this little 1-4 English chainmail piece. Now the technique shown in that video you can use to make any kind of chainmail that follows one specific pattern like vests or chainmail shirts or just belts or something like that. Now. I will show you in this video what rods I use. I didn't cover it in the previous one. What sizes of rod is a good size to use for what purpose. And I also want to talk to you about how I would pattern a shirt and how I would go about designing a shirt and where you start with that weave to make a long sleeve shirt like I have or even a short sleeve shirt. It's the same technique. Okay, first off, I'd like to discuss the sizes of the rods that I use. Now, this is the rod that I use to make my shirt. It is a one centimeter diameter rod. It is a perfect size to make something like a chain metal shirt with 1.6 millimeter galvanized wire. The rings are small enough to give the shirt a nice strength. It won't, the rings won't pull apart under its own weight and it is also not so small as it makes it difficult to slide the rings into each other because that becomes a concern when the rings get too small. Now you can use smaller diameters for other purposes if you're making smaller items like belts or something like that then you would want to use a smaller diameter it just looks a little bit better. Now this is like a really small diameter that I this was the start of a chainmail mitten that I made. If you're going to make something really small and that has really fine articulation like a hand mitten, you want to use really thin wire and really thin small rods to wrap the wire around to make your rings. Because as you bend your hand, it gets really restrictive. It gets to a point where you can't even close your hand properly. If the rings and the actual wire size is too big. Okay, so I'm just gonna go quickly over how I construct a chainmail vest. So, as in the previous video, you would start weaving your chainmail um, with the piece of wire, start weaving it down. Now, what you wanna do first is you wanna make a strip of chainmail the length from one sleeve, end of one sleeve to the end of the other sleeve, and basically, about 25 rings wide. Now, first of all, make it 20 rings wide. Once you've gotten up to the 20th ring or the 20th row, mark these two corners. It's basically where your collarbone would be. From there, those two points, you can mark it with um, a cable tie or something like that on each side. From there, you're gonna leave this part of the chainmail out. This is basically where your head is gonna go through for about another 20 rows. And then you will make another strip of chainmail about 20 rows wide on the other side. So what you would end up with is something that looks like this. Sorry, I don't draw that well, <laughs> but that would be basically about 20 rows, 20 rows, 20 rows of chainmail. So 60 rows in total. That width is from collarbone to collarbone. So there will be an open gap in between here. And the way you do this is literally just by constructing the chainmail as I showed you in the previous video. You would slide the rings through the next ones, but the part where you don't put it in, where you've marked that you don't want to have chainmail there, you just won't put the rings in there. Now, once you have something like this, you can drape that strip that you've made over your head and see how well these parts of the sleeve fit around your arm. So you wanna make sure it is not too tight that it sits reasonably comfortably, but it doesn't hang down too low. 
And once you're happy with that, that is where you're going to stop with that strip. Now, you're going to go on on that shirt anyway, but you're now going to stop where your armpits are. So you're basically going to measure from there to there the width of your chest to underneath your arms. You don't have to be too meticulous at this point about this width. You can always extend the chain mail later. And you will now literally just go on on one side of the strip, just constructing the mail as before. Row after one row after the next, just put the ring through until you get to your desired length of the shirt. We'll do that on one side and you will do the exact duplicate on the other side. Once you've done this, you can drape this whole thing over yourself. Then you can take these two parts and those two parts and now put them together around your chest and around your stomach and see how comfortably it fits. Now the nice thing about the weave going down in that direction, you will have that metal wire or something at the top that you're, you've started doing the weave on and it is working its way down. The nice thing about this weave is it expands that way and it collapses in this way. As the chain mail is draped over you, it will have a tendency of collapsing a little bit in on itself to kind of hug your figure. So it makes it quite easy to get this measurement right. Um, if it isn't right, you can just put extra chain mail in. Once you're happy with the size of the chain mail, you will literally take the back part and the front part and you will close it in on itself. Now, once you close it, you will notice that the two sides of the pattern matches and you will literally just put in the missing links in between. Now you will do that underneath the arms and you will do that on the sides of the shirt as well. It's as easy as that. One thing to keep in mind that when constructing the sleeve, you will notice that it is not just a perfectly straight tube. You want to keep the top of the sleeve straight but reduce the thickness going this way. That's why when you start making the shirt, make a short sleeve shirt first, this will be a perfectly straight homogeneous tube. Then you will in steps reduce the amount of rings vertically. So this would be for instance on one side 30 rings and 30 rings on the back, where over here it will be 25 and 25 and this part 20 and 20 and so forth until it fits your arm quite nicely. If you don't do this, this will hang like a wizard sleeve. There's nothing wrong with that. It is just extra weight and it can get quite cumbersome when you're trying to wear this with uh, like plate armor or something over the, over the top. So this is something to keep in mind if you want to tailor the mail a little bit to yourself. So that is pretty much what I have to say about patterning um, the shirt. It is really one of those things, just start making the chain mail. You will see how it comes together as you're making it. It will start making sense in your mind. Okay, so that's basically what I have to say about chain mail. Um, I will make another video in the near future about how to make a chain mail coif. It is basically, it's almost the same technique. It just varies a little bit. And it is also quite a fun thing to do. One thing to always keep in mind when you want to make something like a chainmail shirt for a specific event, plan a few months ahead. Don't plan to have your chainmail shirt finished for next weekend when there's this big dress up party because you're not going to be even remotely close to finishing it. It is a labor intensive thing and um, it's a fun thing to do, but make sure you have time to do it. Do it three or four months in advance and it's like I said, it's like knitting. Every time you sit down and you don't have anything to do with your hands, make chain mail. If you make all the rings beforehand and you've got a big bucket of rings and you can literally just 
can sit on a bus and make chainmail. Don't drive and make chainmail because you'll kill yourself. But and anyway, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to make more tutorial videos in the future. For the next few videos, I think I need to get back to making my arm honest. So I will show you how I continue polishing that endlessly and then constructing it with rivets and stuff. So, cool. Thanks a lot.